Are you storing your data in a database yet? Do you have information that you want to make persistent, maybe for an app or a web scraper, but you're not sure where to start? Well, I'll tell you, use SQLite. In Python, we have access to SQLite 3, which makes this the easiest and most simplest way to make your data persistent in a database. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create, connect to a database, create a table, and then store some data in it. And at the end, I'll show you a real world example where I have a web scraper hooked up that only stores the data in the database if it doesn't exist already. The first thing that we need to do is we need to import SQLite 3, and this is in core Python, so we don't need to pip install anything. It's already there for us. The next thing that we need to do is we need to set up a connection to our database. So I'm just going to do con for connection is equal to sqlite3.connect and then the name of the database that we want to connect to. I'm just going to call this one example.db. Now what this line will do is if there is no database that exists with this name in this uh, folder, it's going to create it. If it does exist, it's going to connect to it. So the next thing that we want to do is we need to set up a cursor. So what this will do is this will let us actually execute commands on the database. So now we have both of these, we can start to create our table in our database. To do that, we're going to use the cursor and we're going to use execute. Now this lets us execute SQL queries onto our database through our Python code. Now to do that, we need to use the triple quote marks and we need to start writing our SQL query. And I'm going to do create table if not exists, all in capitals. And this does exactly what it looks like it should do. It's going to create this table if it doesn't exist already. So let's do t-shirts because we're going to call our table t-shirts. And now we need to define what columns we want to have in our table. To do that, we need to create some brackets and then we need to write our column headers. So I'm going to say SKU is text. So the first one is the column header, the name of the column. And then the second is the actual data type. You can use quite a few different data types. In this one, we're going to be using text and numbers, which are real. The next is going to be name, which again is text. And then let's just put a size for text as well. And then the price, which is real, which is again, as I said, floating point number. I'm going to run this. And what we're going to do is we see no output, but we are going to have created this example.db file in our project folder here. I don't think I can make this any bigger, but there you go. You see it over there. Now what we're going to do is we want to actually add some data. We're going to use our cursor.execute again. And inside here, we're going to write our next SQL query, which is going to be insert into t-shirts which is our table name and then the word values and now we're going to actually type out the values that are going to go into this database now this needs to match this exactly because these are the columns that we have created in this table so the first bit of data that we're going to do is the SKU. i'm just going to make that up and then i think it's the name size and the price that's going to execute to insert this data into this table here so if we run this, you might expect this to actually put that data into the database, but it won't because we are missing one, uh, one extra line of code that we need and we need to commit these changes. So we do con dot commit. What this means is you can execute or execute many and then do con dot commit at the end to commit all your changes in one go. So now that we'll run this and we'll commit these changes, what we're going to see is that that data has actually been put into the database. Now there's two ways we can check this out. We can write some Python code to select data from this database and then display it, which we're going to do. And we'll also could use a database program. I'll show you that as well in just a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do for row in cur.execute and then our SQL query select star from t-shirts. This is basically saying select everything from this table. You generally wouldn't use this sort of a query with the star. You'd be more specific as to the data that you wanted. However, in this example, we are going to be fetching everything just to keep it simple. And then we can print row. So far, we've connected to the database. We've created our cursor. We've executed a table if not exists. So this means that when it finds this table, it'll just move on. And we're inserting this data, committing it, and then pulling it back out again. So we can see that we have two instances, which is the same bits of data. I'm going to run it again. We've got three, four, five, etc. so on. 
Now this is not ideal, this is not exactly what we want because all we're doing is just inserting this data again and again because we haven't used a primary key. Now when we set one of these fields up as a primary key, you can only have one instance of that value in that database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete our database and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the SKU to the primary key. So now when I run this, we get one lot of data back here. That's great. And if I run it again, we get an error because unique constraint failed. So basically it's saying is you can't add this information again because your primary key already exists. Now we could change this. Let's say this is a different product. Let's do medium uh, large and run that. There we go. We have both instances in that data. But what we want to do is we want to be able to try to insert this data and ignore it if it already exists because of the primary key. Now you can have your primary key as any bit of your information if you like, but the easiest way to do that is to do insert or ignore. So what this is, all this is going to do is that if it can't insert this because the primary key already exists, it's going to ignore it and move on. There we go. So we can run this over and over again. No data is being added change the primary key there we go extra data has been added so here we have a real simple basic web scraper that takes the um, scraping sandbox I'm doing some data cleaning here this is just returning the soup data and we're passing out this information here now if you followed my videos before you'll know that I like to return a dictionary but in this case I'm returning a tuple because it's much easier that way to put the data into our database. Now you can execute and add dictionary information to a database, but if you think about it, the database already has column headers, whereas in the dictionary you would have keys. Now those are two types of the same sort of thing, if you see what I mean, so we don't need to do them. So all I'm doing is collecting the data from here, and then we are returning our list of tuples. So we can see that we have our book list here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comment these out for the moment and I'm going to print the book list at here. So, and I'll comment out the, uh, I know we'll leave that in now. So when we run this, you'll see that we get all the book data back here. Uh, it's a list of tuples. So we want to add this to our database. So all I'm doing is adding execute many. So I showed you execute before, now we're doing execute many. And to add a list of tuples to our database, again, I'm using insert or ignore. Books is our table, the values, and we have three bits of information. We have the title, price, and the stock. So we have these three question marks here, and then our book list. What this is going to do is it's going to run through this, and it's going to add each tuple from this book list into this table. So I hit run, we've got our print statement here and it's finished. Now, because I have insert or ignore, and then we are basically just scraping one page here, if I run this again, we get nothing. We, we will see the output again, the print statement, but we don't get any errors. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the uh, database browser and we're gonna open this up and we'll have a look at this actual database here. So I'm using DB browser for SQLite. This works in Linux, Windows and Mac as well, I believe. And we can see I've opened up the database and we have this table here. So if I go to browse data, here is the information. These are the 20 products on that page that we have got the data for. So no matter how many times we run this, we're not going to add any more information. It's only gonna be these bits that stay in here because I set at the top the title text to primary key. So that means the name of the book, the text is the primary key, that cannot be added again. And because we are again doing insert or ignore, you don't get that in data added anymore. If you found this useful, go ahead and check out this video here. There's more information on web scraping and saving data.